attempting to go live on uh, YouTube. So let's uh, let's grab that. Let's grab that link and let's go over to Discord. Whew. Oh. Why does my screen look slightly small? All right. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Live meetings. Hello, everybody. How are we all doing? Ta-da! We are here. Whew. Um, running slightly behind. Not too far behind, but slightly behind. <sighs> Another week behind us. Is anyone there? Are the are you hearing me? Double check. Always going to make sure. Uh, if anyone's on YouTube, you can go ahead and chat me up on YouTube. Uh, or if you want to chat me up on uh, Discord, that's always great as well. Just uh, anyone who wants to have their microphone turned on or go ahead and send that. So, so someone's watching on YouTube. That's good. And uh, must have heard me ask that because otherwise they wouldn't have said anything. All right, so everybody else, are you hearing me okay on uh, Discord? Okay, good. You're hearing me on Discord. You're hearing me on YouTube. What? Uh, what's the worst thing they can have next? So, uh, first off, Project-wise, uh, and I'm trying to figure out, here's the thing. Okay. When I am in, and I open up my Unity Hub, I see in here that I have, yes, some of you have successfully uh, added me to some projects. Um, so congratulations, uh, McClars2, Z 5 NIGOGM, you have added me to your projects and your organizations. Um, the rest of you, I've seen some invitations to organizations. These other are, are my some of my older uh, classes, my older students, and I haven't seen a lot of invitations to specific projects yet. And sorry to be just pointing the top of my head at you there. Uh, let's see. Let me... There we go. Okay, now I'm more centered, I guess, sort of. Um, so you need to go ahead and add me to your projects. Cause if I don't, if I can't get to your projects from there, um, it's going to be, it's going to be crazy. Okay. The project is due on the 30th, which basically means next for next Wednesday, sort of in between classes. Um, the good news is the first project, I know there's going to be issues with regards to making sure we kind of get through the, uh, the whole process of getting people on uh, and into Unity uh, team and so on. So don't worry, don't freak out, don't 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 lose sleep. But let's let's do get this working. Let's get this out of the way. Um, and the important part is, of course, to actually be doing the work and uh, the submission. You know, getting the 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 other part, we got to get that to happen as well. But you should be following along. Um, so I'm going to go ahead now. Uh, Unity is opening up for me. I want to go ahead and open. Look, there's Unity again. Uh, and I had in my scene, if I go double click on my canvas, remember we had this uh, set of buttons here. We had a flashlight. We had some kind of hints going on. We even had some sound that was at one point, two lectures ago, we were sensitive to how far away from the user we were using the distance, using vectors and distances between positions, right? If we have two positions, we can take a vector in between the two. Um, and I'm going to try, let's see if I can do this. Um, let's see if I can do this. They, I have this, I have this wonderful, this wonderful, that's not it. Uh, application that will let me draw on the screen. And I think that's going to be handy. Um, 
It is not Corsair Q. I do not need to. Ah, there, Epic Pen. That's the one. Corsair Q is great. And, and uh, I cannot hear you. That's a problem. That is a problem. Hold on. Okay, let's try this again. Try that again. Can can you? Ah, okay. That's weird. It didn't come through because normally when it doesn't go to my headphones, it's smart enough to go to my speakers. And that's weird. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you are. Um, and what that means, what I mean by that, if you are using uh, Unity Team, right, every time you're working on your project, you should be pushing it to the cloud, right? There's the little, you know, keeping it in sync with uh, what's going on. So let me, let me see if I can do this now. So I've got my, uh, yeah, I do have my um, thing. So up in here, Hopefully, you're seeing, let me make double, tri triple make sure, oops, that um, everybody is seeing the right thing on here. Let me change this around a little bit. Oh, that means I'm going to have to erase that. All right. So w before I get, got too into things, I wanted to talk about to make sure how the Unity uh, Teams part was working and this uh, sort of cloud submission and all that stuff was working. And I don't want multiple things submitted through LMS. That's not what's going on. Um, what I wanna have, what I wanna see happen is I want to see that you have been using the uh, Unity collaboration stuff to back up your work, to make progress on your work and so on as we go on. So let's, let's do this real quick. You'll see on here, um, I have services. If I click the cloud, I can see what services I'm using. You should have already seen this and uh, you would have enabled collaborate. So in this project, I haven't turned on collaboration, right? So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna turn on collaboration and uh, it will see it on this uh, other thing here. It's a project does not have a Unity ID to enable this service, go to project settings, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so I'm gonna let it go ahead, uh, use, uh, I'm going to select the organization that I'm part of and create a project ID. And it will now enable it for collaboration. So I've enabled this project for collaboration and I've assigned it to my organization. All right. Well, not yet. Not yet. That does not, it, it, it sets you up to do this, but it doesn't automatically do it. So now we have, oh, let's see, collaborate, collaborate. Now turn that on. All right, so now collaborate is turned on. And this is a little bit new and exciting with the, the new versions of Unity. Now, once it's turned on, then I'm, I can use the Unity team server to back up my project and to save potential revisions of my project, right? So we, uh, we have collaboration turned on. We could go from here, we could go to the dashboard, we could do new, new versions and so on. But the important part here is this publishing, reviewing and sharing file changes and so on here, and also seeing history. So these are, normally you'd have, to, the Unity would, would make you go through a little uh, um, extra, rigmarole here, but you can see here, so I can say publish, opening the changes panel. Um, we should see that now. Whoops. So here's all of my changes that I've made since I initially started things. In this case, it's going to say everything because I have not, you know, your question was, did the, the collaboration part, did that enable it? Nope. So at this point, it's a, it considers everything to be a change. So um, I have to go ahead and push this first version and publish it to the cloud. So uh, I could have gotten there through clicking on this little button here, or I've gone here to the collaborate here. Now, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, all right, I wanna publish changes. So I'm gonna say all changes. 
And I'm going to say, this is my first push to the team server. OK? And I would then say, publish. And this may take a little bit of time, hopefully not too bad. Um, and this is probably because I've been tacking on all sorts of additional stuff on here. Normally, your project probably is not that big. Um, it's not everything, all your changes up. Every time beyond that, beyond this first, it's only going to push the things that have changed up to the cloud, right? That's the nice thing. So if I change one tiny thing in one file, it'll just push that one change up rather than push, you know, save it in yet another whole backup of things. So it just pushes up incrementally these tiny changes, right? So thinking away and once it gets done, do, 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 do. I'm not used to making that in project settings here too. That's exciting. So from project settings, I'll close that one, close tab. I can always get back to project settings from in here as well. So I can open them up from that menu. Project settings, I don't like to have taking up space on my interface because it's something you don't really refer to all that often. Um, but it is where you can get to the services now, right? If you're running an old, probably aren't. Um, but in your project settings, services and services has collaborate, right? So there we hit 100%. We're good. So it has no changes to display. So we have effectively made our first contribution, that check-in, the one where I said, okay, you should have pushed in at least once. Ideally, this would have been two weeks ago when I first started working on the project, but I wanted to save this one for now to make sure that everybody sees, that everybody's reminded you would have forgotten a long time ago if I actually pushed it up then. Okay. So I've pushed up this version using Collaborate, right? I've published my first version. If I open the changes panel now, you see changes here. There is no changes. I can say open the history panel. You'll see, ah, okay. There is also some history. 41 seconds ago, I uploaded. About three minutes ago was my initial commit of, wow, okay, this thing's just... My initial commit with certain changes as well. It's interesting. I don't know why it's it has two init, two commits there. Maybe it, maybe it did push one up. No, that doesn't make sense because it would have pushed all those changes. Um, come back to that. All right. So we'll close this now. I can see my history. So every time I commit now, if I made some changes tonight, I'd see yet another version if I pushed it up. All right. If I collaborate if I pushed it up here. Normally, I'm going to this button up here to see what's what. Okay, collaborate being up to date. Now, the question is how to share this with another user. So it used to be pretty easy to do that. And now, instead, we're going to go to this little menu thing here. And I'm put my epic pen down here so I can get to it easier. So this part up here, you notice I, I hit those three little things. I wish it would just differentiate between my pen. Anyway, so I clicked on here. I got invite teammate. So I can click on that invite teammate. It will go to the web. It will load and show me all the people that are in my organization now. And I'll now erase that yellow. And it will give me the opportunity to add people, to invite people to this particular project. And it's waiting, but come on, Unity. There we go. It wants me to buy stuff. I'm not going to buy anything today. So here's my uh, dashboard on the Unity site. So now they're doing a lot more back and forth between here. So you'll see now, if I wanted to add a person or group, 
one of the easiest things to do is to type an email address or a member that you've already added to the group. So I could say amory at rpi.edu add. In this case, it's going to say the email is already exists for this project. So I, I can't share it with myself. But this is how I would add someone to the team. Okay. Normally, you should see after you add me to your to your project here, right? Um, and you'll see the project name, the project ID, lots of gobbledygook in terms of numbers. Um, but you should see yes, Unity Teams access. You might see seat type, which would either either say uh, student or uh, I forget what the other, you know, access level, probably user or owner or, you know, you can you can set that to whatever. As long as you've got me on that team with some type of access, uh, owner, manager, user, right? The main thing is how much level of control you're granting someone else. So I, I'm not going to need to own, manage, or use. I, I just any of those should, should work just fine. All right. So this is the main part. Make sure... Again, it could just be A-M-E-R-E-E -E -E at rpi.edu, right? To make sure that, yes, that is the one you're sharing this project, which I'm already part of your organization. If I'm not part of your organization, it might uh, ask you to add me to your organization as well, if you haven't gone through that, right? You can choose a group, a member or group from the organization, normally what you're just doing. Um, but... You can either also you can do it, invite someone by entering an email address. All right. So as long as they have a uh, an account, which I do, you can enter email address attached to my developer network account or choose me as a member or or uh, a member of your group from your organization. All right. So sometimes it's easy to go ahead and set me up as part of your organization. And then you would just say da da, that's me in the organization. All right. Now, in this case, look at that. I had another account already set up for me here. And I can get access to it there. All right. Now, normally, I think after we go through the whole process later on, I think it will also it should show, it show a yes in there as well. Uh, let's see. What's it complaining about here? No. So at this point, I should have access to it here. Let's see, refresh. Mm -hmm. Ah, computers. Mm. Let me edit my organization's permissions just to make sure that could have been the problem because it's assigned by organization there. Organization details, one user, see all, teams basic, that's fine, edit. Hmm. Or in a group, that's okay. Save. Don't save it to don't don't send it to my Gmail account. <laughs> so it says Unity Teams Basic, Unity Teams Basic. That's fine. And organizations, I'm in the organizations, and we should even be able to say projects. And there we go, projects. So you can double check across all these different things. So, wow, okay, they've made this look fancy. Uh, let's look for GSAS. I'm a guest on 98 projects, wow. Where is my new project? <laughs> I name it. 
It is named Fall 2020. Okay, this is Unity being new here. Well, I'm going to come back to that. These are these are my projects in my organization here. This, don't worry. Yeah, this is this is. Uh, I'm just kind of surprised that the, my latest one is not showing up in here. Um, you see, like if I say all guest projects, this this would be so. Some of these actually, depending on if you've if you've added me as a or user to your organization as a guest, it wouldn't be part of these. If you added me as an owner or manager, they would actually show up in here. So sometimes some some projects in here have been usually the ones that are named New Unity Project um, are the ones that people have shared with me. But I'm not quite sure why my latest one is not showing up in here. A uh, user is fine. It really doesn't, it shouldn't matter if it's user or manager and so on. Um, I'm not gonna try to debug too much of this, but normally in the older version, in last semester or over the summer, normally I would see the person I just added and you'd see Unity Teams access and you should say yes, you should see yes there. Uh, I'm not quite sure why Unity is not saying yes there at this point. So let's close that though and continue. So at this point, it is now shared with the organization, should be shared with the user, and it has been pushed up. Now, the moment I make changes, it says yes. Okay, that's good. Uh, you must be a bug to just that project. Yeah, it could uh, sometimes, honestly, every once in a while, the Unity team, the, the dashboard is, can be a little bit funky. It, maybe it has to do with uh, the 2020 version now, which is well, slightly odd. Um, or I know they've been complaining that about the amount of space that I've been using on the server lately. Hopefully they're not mad at me. So uh, let's do this, though. I'm going to go ahead <laughs> and change something really, really simple. We're going to go to the scene and maybe I'll take the Sanctum object and just move it around. And uh, I'll move it over there. And if I press Save, you'll see that right now there's a little arrow up there. And I don't like the way that it used to be much more obvious up here. And you see it has a little arrow. And if I click on that, it's going to say, ah, OK, that empty scene has some changes in. Do you want to publish those? And I would say, OK, I moved the sanctum and I would then publish that change and now you'll see in my history that I've got this new version that is the version where I moved the sanctum I could actually go back and say well okay let's see this version and I could go back to that version if it turns out I don't like where I just put the sanctum just now I could go back to my old version or I can just you know keep things going on there forward. So most of the time you're just going to be kind of progressing forward. If you introduced a really bad bug or something happened terrible, you might use this go back to an older version perhaps. But for now, just be aware of that, right? So this is the part will allow me to say, ah, okay, um, yes, the newer version will stay there, right? The new versions do stay around. You can like revert back to here, and this version will be there. And then you can even like change and add the new version kind of in place of this other temporary version. So it will it will keep all the different versions for you, which is kind of nice. Um, important when you're dealing with a larger organization or a larger project, certainly. So this would have enabled me to say, ah, OK, you started the project a week ago. You made some changes. You have been working on it because you remember to save after every time you changed your project. And then. A very important part would be that, okay, the final version was made, was submitted 
exactly when compared to, you know, so I know when the deadline was, you know, when, when you actually submitted your last changes before the deadline, right? This actually does keep track of all of those dates and things, right? So that's the nice thing about here as well. Okay. So go through those process sees to make sure that you are submitting the project that way, right? Um, if you, I'll, I'll, you know, be double checking over the weekend, I'll kind of like start sending out emails to like, you know, I'll, I'll just basically do an email list of like everyone who I haven't gotten a submission from so far. Like I said the first project, I'm really, I'm okay on that. And I'll like hound you to make sure that you've made the submission. Um, subsequent projects, I'm not going to come chase you down. The first one, I'll chase you down because it is, as you just saw, even I'm having some, it can be challenging the first time you deal with it, getting it set up. So we'll work our way through that. But subsequent versions, once you have it set up, it's on you. Make sure that you've got it. I won't uh, chase you down nearly as much as I would on the first one. So let's go back. Now I'm going to close this and look at my scene again. And it looks like we've left everything off in this kind of weird projection perspective. I don't want to do that. I want a 2D game. So I'm using orthographic projection here. And if I hit play, where did we leave off? Um, I hit play. And we have our game in which I move around. If the flashlight is on, hopefully I should be... Uh, getting hints it's a little bit ugly at the moment because of the way right so i have my i'm gonna move this again let's just be out of there it's not a great thing um so i have my hints on the screen depending on whether or not the flashlight is turned on right Oh, and the flashlight turned off because I had no more batteries and so on. Uh, let's add one more thing. Let's just do a quick for example. So in my game manager, and again, this is all sort of, you know, once again, it's a turn-based game and everything. There's no real-time clock in the game. So charges of a flashlight every time I move, whatever, those are turns. Right? So we'll go to our game manager script. And I want to let the player know how many charges of the flashlight are left. So let's, uh, let's fix that. Uh, and the other thing I want to fix was on the canvas here. Let's see, my flashlight, by default, it was turned on, which I don't want. I want it to be turned off when I start out. Um, and I'm also going to say in my hint message, uh, I'm going to say, turn on flashlight for hints. I'll let the player know kind of what's going on. And now let's go to our script. All right. It's on the other screen. So here, we had our flashlight, charges start, things are going on. And I want to let the player know how much flashlight is left. So let's, let's get fancy. So we've got the canvas. What other things do we have? We have buttons, we have text, we have toggles. So if I right click here and I say UI, you'll see there are Let's see, text, images, raw images, buttons, sliders, scroll bars, drop down fields, input fields, canvas, panels, scroll views, and event systems, and so on. So let's do something fancy. And I'm going to say use an image. It's going to be mind blowing here. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. Um, and the, let's see, I'm going to regret this the moment I start doing this. So the image here, I wanted to use, I wanted to basically create a, um, uh, yeah, I'm already regretting it. With, 
Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get fancy. Well, you can, there's ways to do, um, basically sort of create a health meter and, and uh, I, I wanted to be fancy with health meters. But let's see. So I'm gonna use my, go to my pictures and try to use the sanctum. Bring that in here. Ah, okay, all right, maybe we'll, we'll be okay. So it is going to be a filled image. This is my sanctum here, right? And it is a filled image. Now you see this fill amount down here. Watch this, ready? You see that? So it went from one to zero, right? So it's kind of a cool health meter. Think of it that way. Now this is I'm, this is set to radial at the moment. I could even do say, say just horizontal and be like, you know. Uh, in this case, I think vertical is the best one. Right? Maybe that's the most make the most sense. Or let's see, what else do I got? Um, radial ninety. That's kind of weird. I don't know. We should take a vote. What does everyone think? Um, you like that? I do, I, I do like that too. I do like that too. Yeah. So let's go with that. We'll go with that one. All right. So we've got a, you know, real simple, just dragged it in. Here's the image. And the key things here are the image type is that it is not a simple sprite. It is actually, it's not a slight, it's not tiled, it is filled. Okay. That's the, that's the fanciness of it. Uh, and this image is on the canvas. This is not a sprite, right? You'll notice I still have this sanctum down here. If I double click on that, that's still the sanctum that's part of the game world. This actually exists in the game scene, in the, the game world. This other one up here is an image that exists only on the canvas, right? Entirely, entirely different. So if I double click the canvas, you see where we are there, all right? And maybe I'll move that image around a bit. So we'll drag it up there, okay, keep it out of the way a little bit. Maybe even do a little scaling here. Put it right there. It's not going to bother anybody. All right. So now I have this image. Let's name it something better. Uh, we'll name it uh, charge meter. Right. So that is our charge meter, and it has a fill amount, which is set to one. So inside of our game manager, we probably want to do something to that charge meter to its fill amount there similar to how we are like modifying things with the flashlight and buttons and so on. So let's go to the game manager. Let's open up the game manager script. And we could do this for now. Let's, let's just do this. We will say, uh, what do we call it? Charge meter. So we'll just call it meter ref for now. And we'll go back over here. We'll say, ah, okay, now this uh, meter ref, once it updates, we need to refer to that meter ref. So we'll come up here, grab our charge meter, pull it over here, and put it there. Okay. Um, so now we have a reference to the charge meter. All right. And let's make sure what we're dealing with here. So charge meter was a charge meter is the image part of it. All right, that's uh, bolt is complaining, that's okay. So how would we go about changing that? Well, let's assume here in our check position and collision, that's where everything, all the fun and excitement is going on. Things like turning down, you know, using up charges and all that kind of stuff. I think that's, yeah, flashlight charges is over here. So one of the first things we need to do, it was a scale from zero to one. So we have to establish what is that range. If we said, okay, the uh, we have 10 charges for, for starters, somehow I have to say, okay, uh, I need to keep track of max charges as well, right? So the maximum charges is 10 and what I should really do is, so to not keep this in two places, I should say during startup, I'm going to say uh, 
flashlight charges equals max charges. So I fill up my flashlight right away according to this maximum. Now, if I need to figure out, okay, what proportion of this, this fill amount, I can say flashlight charges divided by max charges. That's going to give my proportion, right? So in check position and collision, which gets called all the time, I could even just go right here when it only when it changes, perhaps. I would say the amount that I want to actually specify, and I have to be careful now because both of these numbers are integers. Remember our problems with integers? If I, if I said, okay, what is 9 divided by 10? It doesn't give me 0.9. It gives me 0. So this might be a case where maybe these should be floats. And I'm going to make that 10. Right. The good news is, Everything else should continue to work correctly because I can always say charges minus minus, and that's going to subtract one from a float or from a, you know, whatever it is. That's fine. All right. So here we were, and we said, okay, flashlight charges divided by max charges. Something equals that. Right? That's something. And what is that something? It's going to be something here on the meter ref. So we're going to say meter ref dot. And we're going to say get component because we need to get a component of the meter. And the component we're interested in is an image. That object, this meter ref object, thankfully, it only has one image on it. So I can just say, give me the image component. Right. Dot, and we're going to look for what? It is fill amount. Okay. So now every time flashlight changes, I'm going to call meter ref dot get component, get the image component of the meter, and set the fill amount of that meter to the number of flashlight charges divided by its maximum number of charges. Now, the bad news is, and this is kind of hidden, I suppose, is the first time around, if nothing has run, it's assuming that this is just at 100% for starters. And so I guess that's okay. It'll already be there. It's, it's uh, we're assuming everything's initialized correctly. Whoops, my phone is ringing, let me. Tell that person to go away. All right. Um, all right. Let's make sure my wonderful smiling face. I wonder if I can move my wonderful smiling face so that it's not going to be in the way. Better spot. Let's see. Um, what do we think? Like there. Okay. Maybe that'll work. Mm. Maybe I'll just turn off my wonderful smiling face for the moment. There we go. It's not that wonderful. It wasn't that smiling. Well, it's smiling, but anyway, sorry. So I'm going to hit play. I'm going to hit, well, I'm going to hit save first. That's a useful thing to do. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to hit play. And you see me like going like, be nervous. So here we are. And I hit flashlight and I move. I can see, ah, I'm using a flashlight. Better stop that. So now I'm moving around in the scene. I'm moving around in the scene, but I'm moving potentially blindly in the scene because the flashlight isn't turned on because I'm, I'm kind of managing my flashlight resource, but I'm moving around according to how loud things seem to be. So I can still move around and find where I'm going. All right, so I've got that those two modes going on in here, so... Um, so I have to start to decide now, I have this text that's being updated all the time. Maybe that should say something more interesting than, you know, exactly where to go. I could say, ah, okay, you're feeling colder because, you know, you're further away, right? 
the thing that you want to be continuously updating, you want to have kind of vague so that it's not obvious to the user. Or maybe the maybe the sound is too subtle. So it would be a little bit less subtle here in our in our uh, text here. So maybe that text should say something like, where is it now? Um, it was saying. Hmm. Or maybe that should be the part where it scares off the enemy or you get killed or something like that. Uh, here, this was way too obvious. Player is at. Well, it says player is at. It doesn't say where the exit is. Uh, it might still be too, too weird. Instead, I want to say what? Um... I mentioned in the project, in the project description, if I can find the project description here, this notion of warmer and colder. I think I, I think I said that. Uh, continuous sound, dynamic feedback, a simple changing text as demonstrated in class. Three sounds, proximity. Uh, Well, I used to say warmer and colder somewhere. Ah, all right. Didn't mention that. Well, okay, we're mentioning it in person. So the idea is if someone's getting closer to the to the goal, we're gonna say, ah, you're getting warmer. If they're getting further from the goal, we're gonna say you're getting colder. So we could say if what? We're going to compare the distance. See the same portion here where we were calculating that volume? We can use this distance dot magnitude. And we could say if distance vec magnitude is what? Is greater than. Is that me? I heard an echo. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep track of last dis, uh, last magnitude. So I know I'm getting warmer when I'm getting when it's getting closer to it. I'm getting colder when I'm getting further from it. Right. So I don't have a last magnitude yet. So um, I'll leave this like that. And this last magnitude, and I'll have a else. If less than, there's an invisible cow. Oh, OK. That's a good idea. Yep. And if we are further away, that can happen. Else, We're going to have some condition where it is no change. So let's let's tell the user that. We're going to tell them, OK, magnitude is greater than last magnitude. You feel colder. Less than last magnitude, you feel warmer. And here, nothing changed. OK. And the thing we don't know is we don't know what is this last magnitude. So it, yes. Well, maybe they aren't. Maybe they're moving sort of parallel to it. OK. Is that possible? Yeah, if you did like a subtle like move diagonally, I guess you could move sort of uh, in certain circumstances. So I, I'm just covering the bases here. Like if there's if I was imagine imagine it was at the center and I somehow were able to arc around it like a circle. Right. It'd be kind of a cool move on, on my my part as a, as a user. Uh, I'm not sure I could do that, but I, I always opt on the 
over. So maybe they, maybe they didn't, you know, maybe this, this never happens. This nothing changed. We'll see when it's running, but it's a good question. It's, you know, I'm going to assume that. Yep. Yep. Oh, no, 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 no. You definitely don't need an else. Yeah. Yeah. You can always have an, a, just a, just an if without an else. Yeah. Absolutely. You can have an if without an else. But in this case, I just I just wanted to make sure that if there's some circumstance that, um, you know, like I said, you know, it is I'm, I'm overthinking it that perhaps, you know, I can be work, you know, moving around it like at the edge of a circle or um, every time I keep just bumping into the wall or something like that, you know, some some odd case where where my motion didn't actually help. So um, so we'll leave it leave it at that for now. So. After I do the check, that's where I want to remember this last magnitude. And this is a technique you're going to wind up using um, sooner or later in, in all sorts of situations where you're keeping track of the state of something so that you can then compare it for next time, right? So we've been comparing this magnitude to where we last were. So after I do that check, I'm going to, I'm going to save where I currently am to that last magnitude. I need to, I'll save that up here. Um, it has to It has to stick around for the whole thing. So it's gonna be outside that scope. So we're gonna say look, float max, no, sorry, sorry, last magnitude. And I'm gonna just give it some really, really big number that it could never be. So the good news for the user is that the, the first time they play, they're gonna get closer. I guess that's, you know, cause they have no initial distance from it, you know? Um, or we could even say, well, that's not true. Um, we could say, well, no, that is true. We'll leave that for now. That last magnitude is just really big. So we're going to assume that coming into the game, they got closer because they were out in the somewhere floating in the universe before they got here. So let's see if that's going to work. I'm going to hit save and get back to Unity here. And it will take a second. And there we go. So I'm going to start to move. I feel warmer. Oh, I feel colder. I'm going to move back up, feeling warmer, colder. Hmm. All right. And that way, I'm feeling warmer. The music's getting louder. Oh, colder, warmer, colder. Interestingly, no. So what's happening? I must be right on top. This it told me warmer, but I never had the situation where it said, okay, you actually got there. <laughs> so that's the part that needs to be fixed. I need a win condition, right? So that um, it got to be close enough to zero so that I was done, right? Um, so that would be the part going in here and saying, all right, after checking everything else, you would check, is the distance vec uh, small enough to say you won, right? We have to add, we have no win condition here, right? I don't think we did. Did we ever add a win? No. So at the very end, win, we won the game. So we have to say something like, after doing all these checks, we would say, if distance vec magnitude, right? This is our, our winning condition is basically saying if distance magnitude vec is less than some amount, if we consider that this amount to be close enough to the goal to win. So we could, you know, set it to less than 0.1 or, you know, some, some value that's less than one. We'll say, ah, okay, print u1, right? 
So this would be the, this case here. You found the goal. Right, we would let that happen. And we'd also, it's a curly brace around here, because we might have some like winning sound that we want to play as well. Just like we had that thing where you hit the wall, you know, you want to have some winning sound. Da -da 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 -da, yay, sort of thing. I'll let you figure that out based on how we did other things like hit sound, get component, audio source, dot play, right? So now that we have that, the last thing we did, you know, in, in our check was our winning condition. You found the goal. So uh, I shouldn't hit play before I hit save. Come back over here. Hit save. Stop the game. So as ugly as it is, and this is where you get to flex your creative freedom. Um, as ugly as it is right now, it does sort of play like a game, right? I can start moving around in the world. Okay, feeling warmer, colder, warmer, colder, warmer, warmer, warmer. I found the goal. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if you wanted to, here's this, the, and we'll, we'll talk a lot more about scenes. Like right now, this is, we're going to call this, um, let's name this scene something better than empty scene. Uh, so save. And so here we have our scenes. And this is called empty scene. Let's call this. Uh, why can I rename that? swear I've done that, but anyway. All right. Uh, and this one should be called Adventure. Oh, well, no, I guess I had Adventure Scene. Um, we'll call it New Adventure. And we have New Adventure. And what I can do then, I can at any point, if, if you remember way back to when I was talking about the, the early version of the game, when we were setting the one, um, the one scene to rule them all sort of thing. It's like, this was a blank scene that just would load a new scene if I hit that button, right? So here I have a blank scene, it has a button in it. And I hit that button, it loads a new scene. And then I can say, return to main, it'll go back to that scene. Right? This was uh, early, early, early on. And if, if not, I'll, 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 re, I'll reiterate that one as well. Maybe we might have gone through quick on that one. Um, so I'll, I'll, let's see, are we on time? Um, here's what I'm going to do. So uh, as far as check-ins go today, let's see. I'm going to do the quick check shout-out check-ins like we did the last time. Uh, now not, okay. I see Joseph and you are first on my check-in list. Joseph, are you there with me? Maybe, uh, he's caught. Farlem four. Let's see. Is Farlem four here? Okay. Zheng K four. Everyone is hushed. Silence falls over the crowd. Uh, easy enough to. For me. Oh yes, okay, I see him. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Cronus, K R O N E S. Yes, you are here, Sebastian. Okay, how could I? All right. Um, so I'm gonna count that as check-in part to just you know give you credit for today and. We'll keep on going uh, a little bit to kind of cover this piece, unless you had a specific question or did you, it's an, 
Oh, okay. All right. Yes. Oh, but at 420. Yes. But but I see you are here. Um, okay. My headphones are chiming to me that I may be running out of battery on them. That'd be bad. Um, we'll consider you here for today and we'll, we'll, we're going to move on. How's that sound? We'll work it on. I said what I really, um, and this has been, it, it sort of depends on the context of classes. I just really want to make sure that nobody's fallen off the map. You know, it's really just a kind of way to, to kind of make sure people are, are here and with us and I, without getting too caught up in, in, uh, uh, attendances and, and, and so on. So, um, that's, that's the goal. Um, all right. I'm going to have to try to plug in my headphones. Hold on one second here. Let's see if I can do this without it being too disruptive. Okay. That was part one. Are you all still there? Okay, and part two is that my mouse that I was using was now gone to be turned into mud. So I have to use my other mouse kind of thing here. Let's see. Theme, theme. No, why can't I? I can't select anything. Oh, don't tell me I can't click with my mouse. Oh, well, that's bizarre. Okay, there, it's back, I think. All right, let's see if this works. Okay. Things are working again. <sighs> okay, so let's let's uh, let's take a step backward. Then we'll, we'll I'm going to assume that you don't know about the other crazy scene, and we'll we'll kind of do that from scratch. All right, so we have our new adventure scene here. Okay, and we want to end this scene by going to some congratulations screen. So I'm going to come down to my project window here, and I'm going to right click, and I'm going to create a new scene. All right. So up in here, I'm going to say scene, and I have a new scene, and this is going to be my congratulations scene. Okay. And this is going to be my generic congratulations scene for now. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to add some simple UI text to it. And it's just going to be sort of big. Congratulations. You win one, one, like that. And we'll make the font big. And we're going to increase the size of the wind of the uh, extents of this object so that it's big enough. And we'll double click on the canvas to give us an idea of how big the canvas is. So we'll do that. We've got to center that a little bit. And we'll even, let's see, uh, color. We're going to make it something exciting, like more like a crazy yellow. Congratulations, you won. OK. So this is our win scene now. Congratulations, scene. Right, I'm going to save that scene. I'm going to come over to back to my new adventure game. And inside my script, I want to give this the ability to call that other scene, to go back to that other scene. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to our script. And just like we added the... 
Unity Engine UI part, we're going to say using Unity Engine dot scene management. Using Unity Engine dot scene management. And down here in our you won the goal, we're going to say scene manager dot load scene and in quotes the scene name congratulations okay that will load the other scene it'll drop everything here and bring us to that other scene so i'm gonna go ahead now let's play and so come over here to unity And and it dropped out and it said, "Scene congratulations couldn't be found because it has not been added to the build settings or the asset bundle has not been loaded." Okay, so congratulations is not in the scene or is not in the project. Here's where, how we gonna we add that to the project. So let's first we're gonna double check to make sure that we didn't just misspell it. And sometimes a misspelling uh, can also there. Congratulations, that looks correct. Used to be older versions of Unity would let you get away with this, but now if you need to change this, you can go to Edit Project Settings, and we'll find in here. Uh, mm -hmm. Make sure assets, properties, I thought it was project settings. That's where we used to set it. Oh, no, 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 sorry. Build settings. Sorry. Um, here we go. So not project settings but build settings, we come to build settings, and we want to tell it to, to open that scene. Um, so add open scenes, you'll see it added scenes slash new adventure. Or I could also do things like, you know, drag from here and drag it into my scenes, okay? And that lets Unity know, no matter where I am, that I can also call that scene. I'm not gonna say build, I'm not gonna say build and run. This is build and build and run. That's only when I really want to deploy this as a game. So right now, I'm just letting it know about all the scenes so it can get at any of them from anywhere. So I'll close that. And now, oh, I should have stopped the game. Uh, let's double check. Uh, file, build settings. Nope, oh, it's there. Good. And close that again. Play the game. So playing colder warmer there we go and it complained again it said scene congratulations i must have spelled this wrong congratulate here's what i'm going to do because this is my first mistake was naming it congratulations I should have renamed it win, W-I-N, W-I-N, and go back to my text here and say win. All right, try this one more time. Uh, new adventure. So it's the simple things. All right, here we go. Colder, warmer. What? Wind has not been added. Now what? Come on here. Build settings. Oh, well, let's see. Add open scenes. Oh, I never added congrats. 
<laughs> I added new adventure to that, but I didn't add congratulations. Is that what I did? Ah. All right, Unity. Uh oh. All right, it's there. I'm going to get really good at winning the game, though. Yay! So congratulations, I won the game. That's the end. Now, if I wanted to, I could have music on this scene. I could have animated things. I could have, you know, things falling down, spinning around. Congratulations. Um, yay, confetti, yes. So actually, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good segue. Because, um, uh, so I have another scene now, right? And anything could happen in that other scene. This, is, this could be interesting. Because, let's see, we are at 3.35, and we clearly have more time, which is good. All right. So we have a win condition. We have sort of the walking around, like warmer, colder, sort of give a hint. And it could be like, oh, you feel weird. You feel comfortable. You feel Use your imagination with regards to that kind of like that unsettling, you know, kind of thing. And then, or you can use the music to, to indicate the distance. Uh, we have our indication of our charge meter through our little meter there. The one thing we don't have though, is a score. So let's cover score um, real quick. And we'll, we'll have score and then, then we'll do something entirely different and introduce some new stuff to get you excited about the next project. Um, so in here, what, Let's see how. What's the what's the obvious? Someone shout out. What would be the obvious way to keep track of score here? Every time you move, you uh, your score goes up. Yes, yes. And we had this one. You hit the enemy. We haven't hit the enemy in a while because I can get really good at the game, um, and that should add five. You know points if we hit an enemy or something like that. So here, up in here, we should have something that is um, int score. And the start score is going to be zero. All right. And we know that every time we move, we're calling this uh, check position and collision. So we can just very easily say score plus plus right there in our check position. So every time we check the position in collision, score goes up. Mm, I suppose we could also put it here in our, a button was pressed, maybe. Um, but it'll work in either of those. Uh, let's put it in a button was pressed. Why not? Let's be more kind of methodical in, in how we do this. So, so every time a button was pressed, that doesn't count the flashlight being turned on and off, which is okay. Maybe. Should we, should we count flashlight being turned on and off as a, yeah. So maybe they should get uh, a penalty for the flashlight being on. We could say, oh, if the flashlight is on, score plus equals two, right? So you get lower score if, you can do it without the flashlight being on, right? Potential, potential bonus, right? So then the last thing, of course, would be like, okay, well, where do we show the score? We have to show the score somehow. So this, hopefully now, we showed we added text here. We had text here. You should be able to add text, put a text box up here and show that score. Okay, so that would be a good thing to have. Uh, I'm not going to take off points. The one weird thing is if you do have a yay surprise screen at the end there, um, how do you show the score that you got in that other scene from this scene? That's a tricky thing. That's what we will cover that as part of the next project. So don't worry about that. I know a lot of you, someone will ask me that and, and I'll say, don't worry about it just yet. Um, if you do get that, that's a good bonus point. If you can transfer the score that you get in this game, in this scene, 
back to the other scene, that's a bonus. I'm not going to tell you how to do it. It's certainly possible to do it. It's not difficult to do it, but it's something we haven't covered. So now we're keeping track of the score. You know how to put additional items on the screen, like text boxes, and you know how to change the text that's in them. So use that score counter for that. And then even you know the odd, even the odd. Um, we had that situation in here where you know if they hit an enemy, right, that invisible enemy, which they couldn't see unless they had the flashlight on. So this is like the bonus in here. So maybe four plus equals five. Right, so there's that penalty for hitting the enemy. That's in there as well. But let's leave it there. Uh, if anyone has any questions, Discord is good for that. Rewatch this. Uh, there's lots of ancient history also on the YouTube channel about other versions. Um, I've now created this, this prototype at least four different ways, added different aspects of it along the way, so you can find little hints and references of it here. But I'm looking forward to seeing what, how people interpret it on their own. Um, but hopefully that should give you everything you need to create the Find the Invisible Cow game basically with all sorts of bells and whistles that aren't graphics but since you are so annoyed by the fact that i haven't let you draw any real graphics into your game yet i'm going to show you how to, to how we're going to like jump off from here in the next scene and let's go to our win scene here so it says congratulations you won it says that on the canvas but let's look at the main camera the main camera has nothing on it and I want to have something on it and I want it to be moving and I want it to be simple and let's introduce some physics to what can go on in a game. Okay. So let's introduce some physics. What I'm going to do, I want to get a good image here. So let's see, I'm going to go to... Uh, I'm going to find my apples uh, in one of my other games. I'm a big fan of uh, oh, I guess I can use that. Let's see. Uh, no, I'll do that. I'll use apples. Uh, Unity, what a simple tree. Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. Apple tree. There we go. Found it. Here we go. All right. Here is the apple I'm going to use here. I'm going to put this in my images directory. So in images, I have this thing called red apple, which is a, a little Lego apple. So there it is. I put this red apple in my scene. And if I hit play in this scene, now you'll see, congratulations, not much more of anything. Congratulations, you won. And I have an apple in my scene. Now, you've seen where we were like painstakingly had to like use, you know, the user input and so on, and, and the engine wasn't doing anything for us. But we did start to talk about vectors, and we started to talk a little about physics and things. And the question is, okay, in a game engine, you want the game engine to, to work on your behalf, to do stuff for you. So one of the main things that we use in the engine is something called rigid body physics. And we're going to talk about this on Tuesday. We're going to get right into it uh, on Tuesday and talk about physics and rigid body physics. Um, and the cool thing is we have components already set up in Unity to simply add physics to objects. So for example, here, I'm going to take one of the most basic objects, rigid body 2D, and I'm going to add it to my Apple. All right, so my red apple now has a rigid body 2D. Now, what that means is if I come into the scene and I press play, the apple falls. Why is that? Well, 
Newton would tell you apples have gravity. They fall. So rigid bodies are subject to physics. So the moment we give the apple a rigid body component, it is subject to gravity. Right? So that's why now the apple will fall into the scene. Now, if I want, I can also do things like duplicate the apple. And we will you know, put a couple of apples. And normally, all the apples will fall perfectly synchronized, of course, because that's the way gravity works. Now, just to give you some fun and excitement, we'll also add to this. We had um, a, we're going to introduce this concept. I'm going to add a something called a, I just have a Lego chest in this game. And I'll drag this into my scene. And it's just a chest to catch apples in. And for the heck of it, I'm going to kind of stretch this one out just to make it interesting. And I'm going to scale that by changing my scale here. I'm going to say two apples will just fall past it because this is not a physics object. It's just an image on the screen. So I'll go ahead and I'll say, well, all right, this uh, Lego chest, I'm going to add a component. I'm going to add a rigid body 2D on that. And if I do that, what will happen? Well, what's uh, predictably the, the chest falls down as well. All right. So there's a bunch of different types of physics bodies, actually. So dynamic ones are ones that are manipulated by gravity. Kinematic ones are ones that can be moved, but you want to move according to a script. A static one is one that really doesn't move. It is sort of a the immovable rock, the classic immovable rock. So if I press play now, my chest is not going to go anywhere. It's just going to sit there. Now, it's still not interacting with my apples. And that's because I haven't added a, the next big physics concept that will sort of, uh, let's see, is my clock stopped or am I, oh, I actually have more time than I realized. So, or maybe my clock did stop. Oh no, plenty of time. Okay. So I've got my apples, I've got my chest. They have rigid bodies and this is a rigid body 2D, dynamic ones that will allow it to be acted on by physics, a static one, so it has presence in the scene, but it doesn't really, it's not gonna be moved by physics. And then in order to really get them to do anything interesting, and I'm gonna delete all of my apples but one because I'm gonna rebuild them. So the next step, once I have a rigid body on an apple, I also need to add something called a collider. In this case, we're going to use a 2D collider. It's going to be a 2D circle collider. Circle collider 2D. Okay, so now this apple has physics and it has a notion of collision. And my chest down here also has physics, but it still doesn't have a collider. So I'm going to go ahead and add a collider to that as well. And I'm going to add a box collider. You'll see it's already like created about the right size here on uh, the chest. So if I press play, the apple will fall and hit the chest. And even, let's see, let's get now fancy. We have the apple here and we will duplicate it. Duplicate it again. We'll actually put this one up here. We'll duplicate another one, and duplicate another one, and duplicate another one. And we'll hit play again. And now, physics is doing all sorts of fun stuff for us. So we're going to move away from a lot of the, okay, we have to move everything by hand all the time. 
going forward, it's going to be a combination. That's certainly, you know, you're going to move the mouse. You're going to press WASD keys. You're going to have a joystick. So it's going to be, okay, move the player to the left, move the player up, move the player down. But often it's going to be not just moving their position, but altering their physics, right? You're going to give them motion by giving them velocity or giving them an acceleration or applying a force or just having them in the scene and having gravity act on them. You know, imagine how many of you played Flappy Bird, right? Show of show of hands. I don't know. Um, uh, Cole, who is played Flappy Bird, right? Um, so Flappy Bird is a very very simple game. Right, the the interface is very very simple. What normally happens is, you know, this the the bird has sort of some velocity, some speed at which it is moving from left to right, you know, kind of horizontally through the game, and gravity acts on the bird. The bird will fall down unless the bird flaps its wings. So every time the bird flaps its wings, it you add some force. You know, you you pressing a button will add force to that bird in the upward direction, acting against gravity. Right. So it's a very, very simple physics game. And we can do that sort of thing. And the next game that we do, the next project we do is going to rely a lot more on this kind of combination of physics and, you know, our interaction with it. Right. So if you want to have some fun, I mean, if you want to use what we did here and, you know, kind of add that, play around with that, if you've already got the project done and you want to go ahead and, you know, you know, create a cool congratulations screen with some uh, rigid bodies and things on it, by all means, do. It can be fun. Um, but you don't have to, that's certainly not, we, you don't need, there shouldn't really be any physics necessary at all for the first project. Um, but it's just to really kind of show you that, yeah, from now on, it's important to know when to use physics, when to use explicit manipulation of a, a character or of an object or, you know, um, something in the game. So we're going to be constantly balancing that back and forth. Uh, any questions on any of that? All right. Now it is almost four o'clock on a Friday. Normally everyone would be excited to be getting out of class on a Friday at four o'clock. Um, mm. Me too. Okay. All right. I hate to like, you know, I'm always like, if I talked you to death or not yet. Um, what just... What just happened? Oh, battery. Oh. All right. All right. Oh gosh, that's <laughs> all right. So now I do I haven't I haven't done this in a while, but I, I figured, you know, normally I, I would so I've got some trivia questions. So let's do some trivia questions. Because this is this is game trivia. This is important. So this is intro to game programming after all. And we are game, you know, using game history should certainly be something that you're all familiar with. Um there you go. There you go. So maybe this will come in handy. All right. I've got a couple of questions. We'll go through a few and then, then maybe we'll just re-energize a little bit of a little bit of tea. Um, you know what? Let's, let's do this. I mean, if you want, I, 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 I wouldn't force you to, but let's go ahead. Uh, and, uh, if, if you've got cameras, turn them on. What, what the heck? Um, we'll have some, we'll have some fun. I'm going to, I'm going to stop recording though. Um, so we should be all set. I'm going to stop the live stream on YouTube. And so this is just be for fun. And then if we go back to YouTube, we'll, we'll, we'll do a recording, but for now we'll just do this for sort of, sort of some fun. How's that sound everybody? Okay. So ending the YouTube stream. <laughs> 